Okay, so we're now going to just do the same thing, but with cubics. We already know what the patterns are, but I just want to show you that the patterns are true. So I've said here that a cubic equation always has three potentially repeated roots, alpha, beta, and gamma. We saw in the previous chapters that these could all be real, or you could have one real and two complex roots, which are complex conjugates. Could you have three complex roots? No. No, because they have to be complex pair. They have to be conjugate pairs. So you're always going to have one real root and at least one real root. And you can think of that because of a cubic graph. A cubic graph either crosses once or three times. It can never cross zero times or two times, unless there's one, unless it's a repeated root, in which case it would be like that, in case it's one, two, three. Anyway, I digress. Um, so we're going to try again to determine the relationship between the roots and coefficients of the polynomial. As we said earlier, this is alpha, this is beta, this is gamma that I draw like that, OK? So we've said this cubic can be uh, written as this. And we kept the a at the beginning because we know that we could scale it by a as well. This should have been an identity symbol, but it isn't. And I'm just going to start expanding the brackets. So I'm going to expand these two to begin with. So I would have x squared minus alpha x minus beta x plus alpha beta. And then I've got x minus gamma. Do you want to write this down as we're going? And then I'm going to also multiply that second bracket by the x minus gamma. Uh, x minus gamma. So all of them multiplied by x would be this. And then all of them multiplied by gamma would be gamma x squared minus alpha gamma x minus beta gamma x plus minus alpha beta gamma. So it's starting to look a little bit more complicated with cubics. And then I'm going to collect together the relevant terms. So I have the x cubed. I've then got al minus alpha x squared minus beta x squared minus gamma x squared. So I'm going to write that as minus alpha plus beta plus gamma x squared. So I'm just going to do little ticks where I've dealt with them, so I make sure I deal with all of them. And then I've got, um, have I done that bit right? Yep, I've got alpha gamma x. I don't know if I've done this bit right here. Yeah, yeah I think I've done this one wrong. Yeah, because gamma multiplied by alpha x should be plus alpha gamma x because it's a negative multiplied by a negative. So I made a mistake there. And again here, this is a negative multiplied by a negative. So this should have been a positive. So please make sure that you have got this should be a positive, this should be a positive, and this should be a positive. Yes? Um, if you want, um, is there a sort of symbol you do if you um, have to write like an equation an answer on two lines? You just keep going. Okay. Yeah. So I've got now plus alpha beta, apologies for my negatives that I did wrong there, plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma x minus alpha, beta, gamma. And I've dealt with that one, that one, and that one, and I dealt with that one. So I've done all of the things, and I've factorized them into that bit that we've got. So I get ax cubed minus a alpha plus beta plus gamma x squared plus a alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma x minus a alpha beta gamma. And that whole thing is ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So it's pretty easy to make mistakes there. I made those mistakes with the negatives. Um, So then I'm going to compare coefficients.
Okay. I'll give you just a few more seconds to finish writing those in. When I compare the coefficients, clearly a is just equal to a. That doesn't tell me anything interesting at all. But the next bit, I have that b is equal to minus a alpha plus beta plus gamma. In other words, alpha plus beta plus gamma is minus b over a. But we knew that earlier on, didn't we? We said the sum of the roots was minus b over a. And then for the next bit that we've got, if I compare this part, I've got that c is equal to this bit, which is a alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma x, not x, sorry, because we've got rid of the x. We're just comparing the coefficients. And so here we have alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma is equal to c over a. And then our last part, if we compare the constant term, d equals minus a alpha beta gamma. So alpha beta gamma is equal to minus d over a. So this is the same as we saw for quadratics. For quadratics, we saw that the sum of the roots was minus b over a. We saw that the paired products, when there were two roots and you multiplied them, you got c over a. And if there were three roots like there are here, you get minus d over a. Now I'm just going to introduce you to some new language that I've written down here at the bottom. Instead of writing the sum of the roots every time, I'm going to use the sum of the roots. I'm just going to call the roots alpha. So I'm saying the sum of the roots is minus b over a. The sum of the product pairs is c over a. If I wanted to, I could say the sum of all three of these. But for a cubic, there isn't a sum of them, really, is it? It's just the three of them already multiplied. A couple of things I want to point out to you. This one's dead easy because it's just them all being summed together. This one's dead easy because it's being multiplied together. How would we define this collection of them that we've got here, do you think? Um, all of the sort of, all of possible multiplications Good. between like, two. All of the possible multiplications between the roots. You've got alpha with beta, alpha with gamma, and then you've got beta with gamma. Those are the three possible combinations. So this is the sum of the product pairs. And you can see when you get quartic, so there's going to be a lot more of these, which is why I like to use this notation just to say all of the product pairs, the possible combos that you could get, all of the roots being added together like this. But, yes? But, so why is it that alpha beta is equivalent to the possible pairs? Why? What? Well, it's, just a representation. it's just a representation. It's, it doesn't actually mean it. It's just saying, I'm going to use this to represent these three things being added together. It's saying, take two roots and multiply them and add up all the possible combos you can get. It's shorthand notation. So here we've got alpha, beta, and gamma are the roots of this equation. Without solving the equation, find this. Now, I like to, when I do these, I have 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals 0. I personally like to write above here that this is going to be related to the sum of the roots. This one is to do with the sum of the pairs. And then this one is to do with the alpha, beta, gamma. And it goes minus b over a, c over a, minus d over a. So that I can just kind of visually see a bit about what's going on with the different pieces that I've got here. I just like to write them on there. It doesn't, doesn't have to be done in this way. It's just how I like to see these things. So clearly in this equation, a is 2, b is 3, c is minus 4, and d is 2. And the first thing it wants us to work out is the sum of the roots, alpha plus beta plus gamma. And we know that the sum of the roots is minus b over a, which is minus 3 over 2. The 
the second one is asking us to find out the sum of the product pairs, which we know is just C over A, which is just minus 4 over 2, which is just minus 2. And the third one wants alpha, beta, gamma, which I know is minus D over A, which is minus 2 over 2. In other words, the sum of the triple, not, sorry, the triple product is minus 1. And then D is where we don't have one of those reference points. We're wanting to find the sum of the reciprocals of the roots. What did we do last time when we were trying to find the sum of the reciprocals of the roots? We added the fractions. You get the sum of the pairs over alpha, beta, gamma. Good. I'm just going to do that intermediary stage, and then I'm going to write what Marco just said. So the common denominator is going to be alpha, beta, gamma. This one you have to multiply by beta, gamma, so you get a beta, gamma. This one you would multiply by an alpha, gamma, so you get an alpha, gamma. And this one you would have to multiply by an alpha, beta. So we've got all of the possible pair combinations on the numerator, which is the sum of alpha, beta, and the denominator is alpha, beta, gamma. The sum of alpha, beta is minus 2, and alpha, beta, gamma is minus 1, so you get 2. If you wanted to, you could then solve this cubic that we've got here. And with this cubic, you could check to see if the roots all followed that relationship as well. It's not something necessarily I think you should do but it's just quite nice to see if that pattern still holds, right? It's nice to see, and it still works with complex numbers and stuff. So we can do this whole question without even having to find the roots. We can just find the relationships between them. It's a very kind of like abstract idea of the stuff that we're aiming to do. Everyone got that one written down? Yes. Okay, good. So we're going to try one that was similar to what we did with the quadratics. So it's going to follow a really similar pattern here. You'll notice that alpha, beta, and gamma, we've got a complex conjugate pair, and we've got a real root, which is one of the combinations we know we can have for cubics. And we're going to try and find the integer values for a, b, c, and d. So what did we do when we did it with a, a quadratic? What should we do? How, how are we going to find out the values for a, b, and c here? The sum of the roots is equal to minus b over a. So let's do the sum of the roots. We've got alpha plus beta plus gamma is minus b over a. So the sum of the roots when you have a complex number is really, really nice. Why is the sum of the roots good when you have com complex? Because the imaginary parts are always going to cancel out. That's going to be really, really important when we're doing sums of roots with complex numbers, because the imaginary parts will always cancel because of the complex conjugates. So this and this are going to go, and we get that 4 is equal to minus b over a. And then we also need to work out the sums of the pairs as well. So we know that the sum of the product pairs is going to be c over a. This one's a little bit longer because we're now going to have to do all of the combos of these things that we've got. So we'll have 1 minus 2i, 1 plus 2i, plus 2 lots of 1 plus 2i, plus 2 lots of 1 minus 2i. That's the sum of the product pairs, and that's equal to c over a. If you wanted to be kind of long, you could type that in your calculator. And when we do some things with quartics, it's usually good to like save some values in the calculator and you can quickly do like the pairs really quickly and I'll show you that when we get to it. But for now, I think we can probably just do all this expansion manually, can't we? What is 1 minus 2i, 1 plus 2i? 1 plus 4, because minus 2i times plus 2i is minus 4i squared, which is plus 4. And then I have plus 2 plus 4i 
plus 2 minus 4i. And of course, the i's we're going to cancel out because of the conjugates that we have. So that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 equals c over a. And then the last thing I'm going to do is... No, I'm not going to do that yet. I need to do more for a cubic. I need to use alpha, beta, gamma is minus d over a. You see that pattern? Minus, plus, minus. And so all three of these things going to be multiplied are going to be 1 minus 2i, 1 plus 2i, 2 equals minus d over a. And we already know what 1 minus 2i, 1 plus 2i is. It's 5. So 5 times 2 is 10. So we get 10 equals minus d over a. What do you think we should let a, a equal in this case? Great. It's just obviously going to be 1 because you can see they're all integers. So if a is 1, b is good, c is d is minus 10. So our cubic is going to be x cubed And that is equal to zero. Yes? So why can't we sort of have like an imaginary like cubic or but only in the groups? Well, yeah. Because it, it wouldn't, the cubic's going to be extended to infinity, infinity in both directions. Yeah. Yeah. Graph, so they would always cross the x axis. Yeah. A cubic's always going to cross the x-axis at one place. But, oh yeah, if you mean, always. Like, if you have three imaginary numbers, mm. or three imaginary factors, and you multiply them together... Well, why could you just not have one which couldn't be drawn on as well? Try it. Mm. Try it out. But just try it. It won't work. OK, so that's what it would look like. We're going to then do some questions from exercise 4b, but actually I quite wanted to do this exam question together as well. So I'm going to get you to think about this exam question for a while, for uh, five minutes, and then we're going to come back together and we'll do this together. So this is still on cubics. There's nothing really here that you need to do, but just be really careful because the roots this time are not alpha, beta, and gamma. They are alpha, 5 over alpha, and alpha plus 5 over alpha minus 1. So don't call them alpha, beta, and gamma. Just do the sums of the roots, products of the roots, things like that to solve this equation. And instead of it saying x, we have z as the variable because we've got some complex numbers here, okay?